For question number three, we're gonna graph one more together. So this time we're gonna look at the function y equals 1 eighth times four raised to the x. So if we're looking at our calculator, it should be on. And the first thing we wanna do is go to that y equal button. So that's at the top left, right here where my thumb is pointing at. So if I click that y equals button again, you should see that this is a function from number two. So in order to get rid of that, we can just use the clear button. So the clear button is right here on the right hand side underneath the arrow keys that I'm pointing at. So if I hit the clear button, I should see that that other function is erased and I'm ready for my new function. The first part of my new function is a 1 eighth. So remember with fractions on our calculator, the, the best way to do it that's gonna be universal to any calculator that you use is to use parentheses with a division sign. So I'm gonna start with my open parenthesis, which is above the eight, which is right here. And I'm gonna click that open parenthesis. And then 1 eighth, again, fractions are just divisions, so I'm gonna do one divided by eight. And then I'm gonna close that parenthesis. That closed parenthesis is above the nine. So right now you should have something that looks like this on your calculator. Again, one divided by eight inside the parentheses. Then we're gonna multiply that by four. So we should have times four. And then we wanna raise that four to the X. So that exponent key, again, is right above the division sign, which is right here. So I'm gonna push that button. And as I push that button, I want you to notice that cursor now goes up to the top. And then I'm gonna push my variable button, which is next to the alpha button, which is right here. It's got that X, that T, that theta, that N on it. And I'm gonna push that. In order to see my table, remember my table is up here at the top. It's in blue above the graph button. Because it's in blue, I'm gonna find the blue button and I'm gonna click that blue button first. So I'm gonna hit the second button, then the graph button, and it will take me to the table where I can scroll up and down using the arrow keys. Negative one is the first one I need. And if I look at negative one, the number that goes with that is 0 0.03125. So I'm gonna put that in my table, 0 0.03125. And if I scroll down to zero, I can see zero goes with 0 0.125. Scrolling down to one, I get 0.5. 2, I get 2, and in 3, I get 8. And then I can go ahead and plot those points on my graph. So I'm going to come over to my graph, and I'm going to start with my negative 1, 0 0.03125, which is going to be really close to that x-axis. So if I go to negative 1, 0 0.03125 is really, really close, so I'm just approximating where that point is. I'm going to get it pretty close to that x-axis. Then I'm gonna plot the point 0, 0.125, which again is really close to the bottom there. One and 0.5 is about halfway through, and all these points kind of look the same, but that's just because we have such a small range to plot them in and we're just approximating here. Then we have the point 0.22 and the point 0.38. So those decimal answers, just make sure, do the best you can. Again, it is an approximation. Then we have to remember we do have our asymptote, so I'm gonna plot that asymptote. That's at y equals zero, or the x-axis, and we represent that with a nice dotted line, indicating that we're not gonna go past that line. And then we're gonna draw in our nice curve. So it's gonna curve along, and it's gonna kinda of ride along that x-axis, and then it's gonna increase as we go to the left.